You are listening to the Waking Up to Purpose podcast with Lily Badcock in association with lilybadcock.com. What if every challenge you've ever faced was for a purpose? What if every perceived failure was in fact you stepping ever closer to the life you were born to live? I'm Lily Badcock, and I'm here to let you know that you were born with a divine purpose in your heart. And you're here because you know that's true. The process of awakening can be tough. Fired up and inspired one minute and then overwhelmed and lost the next. I've created this podcast to share with you every aspect of my own journey to purpose, as well as the stories of others who have walked the same path. Fear and doubt can place a lot of uncertainty in our minds, but here's what's true. You are needed. Your story matters. Wake up. Rise up. Together we can. Hi guys, welcome back to the podcast. It's Lily here and today I feel guided to share with you a story that I've definitely told many times before and actually even as I was gearing up to record this episode I started to wonder whether I've even shared it on this podcast (laughs) so it may be that you've heard me say this before but do you know what it's one of my favorite stories to tell and it's I just think it's such a powerful story and so I feel there must be a reason why I'm being guided to share it with you today so for that reason I hope that it helps so The question that I want to open with is something that I would love you to ponder. And the question is, what if we're always okay? Now, I don't know how much you know about my background, but I I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder back in 2013. And so around that time, and definitely in the year leading up to the diagnosis, I was riddled with anxiety. I didn't know at the time that that's what it was, but it was this overwhelming sense of I'm not okay. And really that's all anxiety is. It's the overwhelming feeling that things are not okay. I'm not safe. You know, it's just a feeling of total disarray and like the ground beneath you isn't secure and nothing you do can really help you pull through that feeling in the moment. And anyway, that's been my experience and I've had an experience of that, you know, coming through those years. But then a few years back, I was visiting with my nanny and my nanny had taken a fall. She'd gone into hospital and then she was discharged from the hospital, but they said, you can't go home yet. She just wasn't well enough to look after herself. She was 93. So they ended up putting her into a home. Now, as you can imagine, at 93, it's a little bit of a question as to whether someone is going to get back home, you know? Whether that means that she's not going to recover from what she's suffering from, or whether that means that the decision will be taken that it's best for her to stay in the home. Either way, her wish to go back home was in jeopardy, right? And through, she was only in the home for a couple of weeks, but through the time she was there, she got very, very sad, very, very depressed. And so to try and cheer her up and to let her know that she wasn't on her own, me and lots of other members of the family would visit her on a regular basis. And through those visits, she started to ask me about what I did. And at the time, I was teaching singing and I was performing as well. And she started to take a bit of an interest in it. And eventually, she did get to go home. And they managed to get a care package in place so that she could do that. And I carried on visiting with her. And I would go every Friday and I would teach her to sing. In fact, if you go on Facebook and type in Nanny Ninette over the rainbow you'll find a video that I posted a few years back. I can't remember what year it was. I want to say maybe 2016. Um, And this video of her singing Over the Rainbow, it's just the best thing you'll ever see. So anyway, this became a regular thing. And every Friday I would go and I would hang out with her. And sometimes she would want to sing. And other times she wouldn't really feel like it. And this particular day that 
I want to tell you about was one of the days where she didn't, she didn't want to sing for sure and she didn't really want to speak either. I can remember a wall had fallen down in front of her house so there were a lot of um, there were a lot of guys that were from the local college that had come to rebuild the wall so she had lots of people milling in and around her house which was making her a little bit anxious and I just remember sitting there that day and she was very very wound up she couldn't settle she was wringing her hands she was looking her eyes were darting all around the room and she just kept saying I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing and I kept reassuring her saying this like nothing you need to be doing unless there's something you want to be doing like what do you want to do she was like I don't know I don't know and she just couldn't settle and for a lot of that visit she didn't even want to speak and so I just was sat watching her and as I was sat watching her I was wondering to myself why she felt so anxious because I knew that, well, I was with her for a start. She wasn't on her own. I knew that my mum was coming in later that day. I knew that each day someone would come and make her dinner. She had people helping her get to bed, people helping her wake in the morning, making her breakfast. She even had somebody coming to wash her hair that day. So I was looking at her just thinking, I, you know, you don't need to be anxious. You're completely safe. You're in your own home, which is what you wanted. You've got the roof over your head. The house is safe. You know, the wall that fell down is being repaired like you are completely taken care of. And I just, I couldn't get it. And then as I was driving home that day, I started thinking about it a little bit more. And it suddenly struck me that it didn't matter that I could see she was okay. It didn't matter that I could see that there were people coming to take care of her and, and all of those things. The only thing that mattered was that she couldn't see that. In that moment of anxiety, she didn't have the perception of safety. She didn't have the perception of being okay. She had the perception of not being okay, right? And it was like a light bulb went on. And I was like, oh my God, this was the first time I really started to understand the power of perception. And the funny thing was that morning, I'd received a letter through the post that had really panicked me and it had panicked me to the point that I nearly didn't go and visit her that day um, because I just didn't know what to do about this letter and I couldn't dig myself out of the anxious thoughts, the fear-based thoughts and you'll know this, right? If you've ever had an email or a letter or a phone call um, that's bad news or that is you know something that's not ideal it's so easy to spiral into those fear-based thoughts right and that's what had happened and I'd got so anxious about it that I almost didn't go and visit as I said um, but obviously I did go and visit and then as I was driving home my mind was going to her and then it came back to this issue that I'd had that morning and I was just panicking thinking what am I going to do about this situation? The situation still exists. Now, the situation I'm talking about was a bill that I would not paid. And I'd had a letter actually from a bailiff saying, if you don't pay this bill now, we're going to come and take all your stuff. And I just, I, I was so ashamed and I was completely terrified. I just couldn't help thinking like, oh my God, it's going to be awful if they come and take the telly and the seats. And like, I mean, you hear all these stories, they have those programs on telly. I just was like, I can't pay this bill now. So they're going to come and take my stuff. I, I felt like there was nowhere to turn. I felt like there was nothing I could do. And as I was driving home from my nanny's house, I was thinking, my mind went back to this and I was thinking about it. And in the moment that I realized that her perception was different to mine, it suddenly struck me that maybe my perception on this situation was different too. And I thought, well, maybe there's another way for me to see this situation. And then I got this, I don't know if it was an image or just an idea in my head, but I remembered how I had sat over from my nanny, looking at her, absolutely knowing she was safe, absolutely knowing she was okay, witnessing her anxiety and wondering, why are you worrying you're safe, you're okay, right? And I thought to myself, what if there is someone or something watching me right now in the same way? 
what if there is a bigger picture that I'm not seeing? And what if something or someone is looking down on me going, what are you worrying about? Why are you panicking? Because they have the bigger picture, right? And it was at that moment that that question popped into my head. Well, what if I'm just okay anyway? What if I don't have to do anything about this situation? What if I just decide that I'm okay anyway? And as I thought into that, I realized like, okay, you know, the bailiffs might come. They might take my stuff. They might, you know, bash down the door, you know, whatever horrible idea I had in my head. But does that mean I'm not going to be okay ultimately? Absolutely not. And it was such an empowering realization. And this is something that it's not the first time I've worried about money. And it was one of the bigger worries, I'll be honest. But there have been so many times in my life where I have felt absolutely powerless and terrified and stuck in a situation and can't see a way out. And in that moment, I just had this moment of peace and calm, which was, well, what if I'm always okay? Let them come. Let them take what they want. They're not going to touch who I am. They're not going to take my kids. (laughs) So I'm going to be okay. Like, I'll bounce back from it. I won't be happy about it. It might be humiliating. It's not what I would choose. But I know I'm okay. And that was the crucial realisation. I literally shifted from feeling like I wouldn't be okay to knowing that I would. And it really felt like an epiphany. Um, And so that's the image that I want to leave you with today I just whatever you've got going on in your life right now and you might not have a worry which in which case awesome but if you've got anything in your life right now that is causing you to stress that is causing you to worry then I would ask you to just sit with the question but what if I'm always okay because truly any kind of anxiety whether it can be related to an incident or whether it's the kind of anxiety that just bubbles up out of nowhere I don't think it matters what it is. What lies at the root of all anxiety is the belief that we're not okay. So for me, the mantra, well, what if I'm always okay? Or you could even go a step further and and just decide, I am always okay. I'm always supported. I'm always guided. There is nothing that can phase me. And I just feel like that's such an empowering thought. It doesn't mean that bad stuff isn't going to come at you. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be put through the roller coaster that life can be sometimes. But if you can just get on board with this idea that we're always okay, that you're always safe, it allows you to see things from a new perspective. And actually, in my case that day, as soon as I stopped panicking, I started to think logically. And my first thought was, well, I could just call them. I could just call them and explain the situation and see what they say. So I did, and it was fine. And they broke down the payments into a plan. I paid it back. It was done. And it really wasn't this big deal. And so the fear had had me believe that it was a done deal. Fear had me believing that there was nothing I could do, that there was no way around it. There was no alternative route. Fear had me believing I was absolutely screwed. And it did not serve me to believe that. If I had carried on in that belief, I never would have paid attention to the notion that maybe I could just call and ask a question or maybe I could just try this, try that. You know, when you can learn to put your fear-based thinking to the side, your own guidance, your own intuition is going to pop through. And that's what you really want to be paying attention to. So for this week, I just wanted you to know if something is causing you stress or worry then there is always another way to look at it. There is always another perception and you are always okay. So I hope that you'll use that as your mantra for this week. Um, And I will post it in the show notes below to remind you of what it is. And let me know what you think. I would love to hear your stories. Perhaps you've got a story that's similar to mine where you thought you were at a dead end and you couldn't turn anywhere and then something shifted and here's the thing we chase after external shifts all the time but really the shifts that really make the difference are the ones that happen inside of us and it's the shifts that happen in our belief systems and in our perception that really make a difference so if you have a story about that I would love to hear it you can get in touch with me I will put a link in the show notes below And that will do it for this episode. Now, before I sign off, 
I'm so excited to announce, I, I think I've already announced it, but I will tell you again, <laughs> that the On Purpose Mastermind is gearing up to be launched. Now, originally, we were going to start in June, but I've moved the, the date to the 6th of July. So the first module is going to drop on the 6th of July. Enrollment is open now. I'll put a link in the show notes below so you can click it and have a read through. But the On Purpose Mastermind is a brand new program that I've put together. It's 12 months working with me in a small group online situation. And it runs in two phases. So phase one is a three month program where you'll have weekly content dropping as well as weekly live group coaching calls with me. And then at the culmination of that, we move into phase two, which is nine months together in the mastermind. You can stay in the Facebook group. There's gonna be a private Facebook group for anyone taking part that wants to be in there. You will still have access to me. There will still be monthly group coaching calls. And the purpose of the mastermind is to help you rediscover your purpose. I was gonna say find your purpose, but I don't believe that purpose is something we have to find. I believe purpose is something we're born with. It's something we're born doing. It's just that lots of us forget what that is and we lose sight of what makes us powerful. So through the On Purpose Mastermind in that 12 month container, I'm gonna remind you of who you are I'm gonna remind you of why you're powerful. I'm absolutely gonna remind you why you matter. And I'm gonna be there holding your hand so that you can step forward in absolute confidence to be the person you were always supposed to be. And the thing is, when you allow yourself to be the person you were always supposed to be, then you live the life you were always supposed to live. So if any part of you right now feels like you're not living the life that was meant for you, then check out the On Purpose Mastermind. And like I said, I'll put the link in the show notes below. So that'll do it for this week. As ever, I would love to hear your comments. You can come and hang out with me in the Facebook group, Wake Up, Rise Up. Don't forget that every Friday I do a live intuitive reading in there for anyone that comes live onto the course. So if you're in need of any guidance and you wanna hang out with me, join the Facebook group. Guess what? The link's in the comments. Oh yes it is, not the comments, the show notes. <laughs> as with everything else you can go and click the links there to check it out but as for that just remember what if we're always okay and I'll see you next week thank you so much for listening if you'd like to connect with me further and the awesome community that this podcast is creating then come and join me in my free Facebook group wake up rise up every Friday you can join me for a live Q&A in that group and the links to do that are in the show notes for this episode if you love the show, please leave me a comment and review on iTunes and share with anyone you know who might love it too. In the meantime, have an awesome day and keep shining. It's time.
And here we go. It's time for a cheesy sign off. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to join me and my awesome community in our free Facebook group, Wake Up, Rise Up, go and check out the link in the show notes below. Don't forget, every Friday you can join me in that group for a live Q&A and I also stream that on Instagram. All of the links you'll need are in the show notes for this episode. If you love the show, please go to iTunes, leave me a comment and a review and share with anyone you know who might love it too. And in the meantime, have an awesome day and keep shining. It's time.